Hello, my name is Allison Costa, and I'm a National Air Quality Specialist with USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service. Thank you so much for attending today's presentation on using comment fills to help farms plan for the future. Thank you to the conference organizers for putting together such a quality conference. Sorry I couldn't be there in person. Start off today's presentation, I wanted to know how many of you have seen Encanto? Raise a hand. Working in agriculture, sometimes I feel like climate change is our Bruno, as in we don't talk about climate change. While that's starting to change in many places, it brings up a lot of questions from producers. What can I do? How am I going to pay for it? If I do that, how's it going to help me or my operation? NRCS was built on a foundation of helping farmers help the land. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of our tools that can help drive adoption of more climate smart agricultural practices. Specifically, I want to talk about how climate changes are already impacting livestock and poultry operations what unique opportunities producers have when it comes to greenhouse gas mitigation opportunities, how our tools help producers capitalize on those opportunities, and ways these tools can be used to drive broader implementation of climate-smart farming practice. First, let's review some impacts we're seeing on the ground. One indicator that the climate is changing can be seen with heat waves. While unusually hot days and multi-day heat waves are a natural part of day-to-day -day variation in weather, as you can see in this slide, these hotter-than-usual days and nights are becoming more common, they're lasting longer, and they're occurring throughout a larger part of the year. As producers raise poultry and livestock, this has important implications for the housing and care of these animals. For example, it can lead to higher upfront capital needs for animal confinement and cooling systems, increased ongoing spending on energy to keep the animals and birds cool, and reduce profits from increased mortality, lower weight gain, and other factors. Another example, the increased pest pressure we've seen in the past few decades, seen here using Lyme disease as a surrogate. These maps focus on part of the country where Lyme disease is most common and show dots to represent each case of Lyme disease. As you can see both on the map and in the smaller graph on the right, the number of cases is on an upward trajectory. When winters are milder, fewer pests die off. and warmer temperatures allowed more pests to grow. But regardless of the reason, my point is that we're seeing tangible ways things have changed within our lifetimes and our parents' lifetimes that can directly impact the productivity of our farms and operations. Now, don't get scared. I'm not going to go over climate science in detail today. But a quick review to remind you that carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, some of the major greenhouse gases, act like a blanket over the earth. The higher the concentration of gases in our atmosphere, the thicker that blanket is, keeping our surface warmer. However, reducing the concentration of those gases can keep that blanket from getting thicker. Or as I like to think of it, trading out my down winter comforter for my lightweight summer quilt. Now, when we talk about climate smart agriculture, we're looking at two different segments of the National Accounting of Greenhouse Gas Emissions and Sinks. There are emissions from various agricultural practices like fertilization and livestock care, which are represented in the agriculture sector at the top of the graph. There are also activities that capture carbon in soils and vegetation, which reduce our net emissions. While some of these activities occur on farms, they're included in the land use and forestry category at the bottom of the graph. These two are not the largest sectors of emissions on the graph, but reducing emissions from agriculture activities can be cheaper than reducing emissions from some of those other sectors, like when it comes to replacing old inefficient power plants. So implementing more of these practices, the lower hanging fruit offers many opportunities for producers. Let's look at the places where you get greenhouse gas emissions and storage on ag operations. Top sources of emissions include excess nitrogen fertilizers, cow burps, and the systems used to manage manure. And that's for the sinks, the places we can sequester carbon dioxide. On the agricultural land, carbon can enter the soil through plant roots, litter, cover crops, harvest residues, and animal manure, and be stored as soil organic matter. So how can producers go about reducing emissions or storing carbon? There are a variety of practices that NRCS supports through technical or financial assistance that can help directly reduce the emissions of methane and nitrous oxide to the atmosphere and capture carbon dioxide in soils and vegetation. This includes using anaerobic digesters, managing feed to customize diets to more closely match the nutritional needs of the animals, applying nitrogen fertilizer according to a nutrient management plan, and implementing a variety of practices like cover crops, reduced tillage, pasture, hay, and range planting, and tree or shrub establishment. At this point, you're probably thinking, this is all fine and good, but how do I figure out what makes sense for a particular farm and how much it would help? 
that's where our Comet tools come in. Comet stands for Carbon Management Evaluation Tools. They're a set of web-based tools for conservation and planning and greenhouse gas mitigation in our sector. NRCS developed these tools in partnership with Colorado State University. They're freely available on the internet. The first version, released back in 2005, only calculated how much carbon soil could capture. Later versions have expanded the scope to include agroforestry components, energy, and livestock. The comment tools try to take into account all the different sources and sinks in this picture. So it looks at information like whether you have livestock, how you manage the manure, or if you have rice, how you manage water. If corn, do you irrigate it or put nitrogen fertilizer on it? Are you burning biomass or harvesting wood products? If so, how do you manage those residues? Then it looks at potential changes to those management practices and what impacts those changes could have. To do this, robust quantification methodologies underpin the comet model. They use the same quantification methods that USDA's greenhouse gas inventory and the National Greenhouse Gas Inventory use. All of these soil-related greenhouse gas models, livestock-related greenhouse gas models, and energy quantification methodologies are embedded in the comet tool. Today, I'm going to tell you about two of the comet tools. Let's start with Comet Farm, the foundational tool. Comet Farm analyzes your specific baseline farm scenario. You input lots of specific activities and details about the site and its history, all of those factors I discussed in the other slide. And then it, it pulls in background information like soil types and meteorological data. After describing your current operational practices and historical management on the farm, in the case of building up the relevant soil history, then you choose from potential changes to your operation to create a new scenario. For example, using rotational grazing or modifying a cow site to include dry distillers grains or adding an anaerobic digester. The new scenarios can consider the impacts of an individual change or multiple changes implemented at once. And you can create multiple different scenarios. The tool then runs all those quantification methods on the other page to show you your current estimated emissions and the estimated emissions from each new scenario. The output from the tool looks like this. It shows carbon sequestration benefits and emissions by greenhouse gas broken down into subcategories, both for the baseline scenario and any changes you're analyzing. It presents the emissions for the different greenhouse gases on an apples-to-apples -apples basis using carbon dioxide equivalents. This particular example considered a couple of different feed and manure management options for a herd of dairy cows. You can see the results of each of the two options compared to each other and the baseline emissions. In this case, those red figures in the bottom line indicate that changes would increase the net greenhouse gas emissions from the operation. So this user might want to go back and try something different if they're trying to reduce emissions. The second tool I wanted to highlight is Comet Planner. This is a quick, simple tool that gives average county-based carbon sequestration and emission reduction benefits for a subset of commonly used conservation practices around the continental U.S. For this tool, you input the location and number of acres of practice applies to, select from the list of practices, and get the general benefits estimate. Basically, a meta-modeling analysis, taking results from simulations run through Comet Farm and putting an easily clickable user interface on top of a lookup table containing all those simulation results. So it's got the same robust science backing as Comet Farm. To recap, there are benefits to both tools. Comet Farm is the more robust tool. It gives you a much more site-specific estimate using USDA-approved quantification methods. You can save and update. And it allows you to compare the benefits for multiple scenarios at one time, whereas Comet Planner shows regional average estimates for carbon sequestration and greenhouse gas benefits. It's a much easier and quicker tool to use. Now for livestock. The only options currently available within Comet Planner are for conservation practices on grazing land. However, with Comet Farm, you can look at a broader array of choices for many livestock types, including changing animal characteristics, like weight or weight gain, changes in feed situations, types, intake amount, changes to housing, details about manure management systems, height, treatment efficacy, many more. As you can see, there are a lot of opportunities to explore the benefits of implementing certain practices on livestock and poultry farms in the Comet tool. The tools offer a real opportunity for scientifically defensible, credible, replicable greenhouse gas and carbon accounting across the industry. Thousands of people, including NRCS staff, farmers and ranchers, conservation districts, businesses, scientists, students, NGOs, and others have all used these tools. They use these tools for a variety of ways, whether it's weighing options to estimate benefits under government programs, quantifying potential carbon offsets, considering carbon market, 
where is the basis for providing incentives within supply chain initiatives? Let's look at a few of these opportunities. To start with, my introduction to the tool showed how they could be used to support planning and decisions for individual farmers. For example, for producers exploring options with NRCS for implementing conservation activities using one of our funding programs like EQIP. That's just the start. A producer could use the tool to calculate emissions reductions to tell their story on websites or social media and market their product. And there is another recent initiative utilizing the Comet tools from the Carbon Cycle Institute. These folks have designed a process to develop carbon farm plans, which combines whole farm planning and resource assessment in a comprehensive planning framework. The framework recognizes that in addition to climate benefits, there are important co-benefits of implementing a carbon farm plan, including higher productivity, increased soil water holding capacity, and improved hydrological function, biodiversity, and climate resilience. Climate tools are used to facilitate the process of developing a carbon farm plan and allow for estimating the potential greenhouse gas benefits of a plan. Next, if we turn to ways industry can encourage conservation using the Comet tools. An oldie but goodie I'd left to highlight is Ben and Jerry. After all, who can resist their delicious ice cream? Ben and Jerry's has a long history of focusing on social and environmental goals, including dairy agriculture sustainability and climate change. Several years ago, after examining an analysis of their climate footprint, they realized that since dairy production accounted for more than half of their greenhouse gas emissions, offered a great opportunity to reduce their carbon footprint. To further this effort, NRCS and Ben & Jerry's entered a partnership in 2016 to help dairies implement conservation practices with climate benefits. Through their Caring Dairy Sustainability Program, Ben & Jerry's and its dairy partners used Comet Farm and Comet Planner to quantify emissions and reductions from various conservation actions, such as approaches to manure management and soil health management practices. These could help reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and sequester carbon. The company then has some financial assistance available for their partner farms to implement those actions. While the partnership isn't ongoing, it highlights how companies can both encourage and incentivize climate smart actions within their sphere of influence, how they could use climate tools for scientifically defensible accounting of these actions. Finally, state and local governments can be drivers of change using the climate tools. For example, California is using some of their cap and trade dollars to fund the Healthy Soils Incentives Program. The program provides financial incentives to California growers and ranchers for implementation of certain climate smart agricultural management practices, that sequester carbon, reduce greenhouse gases, and improve soil health. The quantification methodology and calculator tools unique to this program were developed by the California Resources Board, NRCS, and the California Department of Food and Agriculture working together. Those tools are adapted from the Comet Planner methodology. For more specifics about their tool, you can look on the tools webpage, which is included on this slide, or on the Comet Planner website. California's program is a great example of leadership at the state level. The Comet team would be happy to talk with any other states that may be interested in quantifying climate benefits for similar programs. So, now that you're as excited about their potential as I am, if you want to start using the Comet tools, just go to their website and dive in. There are also a variety of training options and useful materials available from the help page on that site, seen here, including YouTube videos, regular Zoom training calls, and a help desk staffed by Colorado State. In summary, the agriculture sector has a unique opportunity to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions, which could help reduce the intensity of climate change impacts we've been observing over the past few generations. USDA's comment tools can help meet this opportunity in a variety of ways, whether it's helping producers make decisions about which conservation practices to implement, connecting with carbon markets, or providing a foundation for industry or state programs to help incentivize these practices. We're all in this together. In closing, I love to show this sweat of slide I got from one of my colleagues in our Northeastern Climate Hub. The original comment makes the point that even if you disagree with the science behind climate change, the actions we take can have broad positive impacts. Couldn't resist adding an ag twist to it. But if we can get healthier animals and additional revenue opportunities, isn't it worth a shot? Thank you again for attending today's presentation. And if you have more specific questions about Comet, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Adam Chambers, the Comet team lead. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Um, I'm going to go to the chat and uh, bring you in for handling any questions. Glad you could join us. Oh, there's, we do have a question in the room. Excellent. Thanks for the presentation. I was curious to understand the constraints you alluded to uh, one differentiator between Comet Planner and Comet Farm is how uh, Comet Farm can handle uh, livestock uh, activities, whereas Comet Planner is 
limited. And I wanted to just understand that limitation uh, better. Are you, are you saying that Comet Planner should be used for uh, quantifying sequestration from feedstocks, for example, but it couldn't be used uh, for modeling the effects of you know, practices in the, in the barn, for example? That's correct. Right now, those livestock practices have not been integrated into the Comet Planner tool. They've been bringing um, different practices in, in phases. So if you want to look at those animal-specific ones, Outside of grazing operations, your only option is the common farm tool right now. Another question in the room? Thanks for the presentation, Allison. Um, I have something that might be a little above your pay grade, but um, NRCS is doing so much now in the uh, carbon mitigation area. Um, as, the, uh, as we go forward and finally get some uh, resources allocated to uh, paying farmers for sequestering carbon, um, who is going to be able to certify that the, uh, that the appropriate levels of carbon are being uh, 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 sequestered? Is that a task that N NRCS is uh, able to do nationwide in the future? Um, so I guess that depends a little bit on exactly how you want those certified. If it's a practice um, that's supported by one of NRCS's conservation practices, for instance, under our EQIP program, where we're providing some assistance to help a farmer with that on a carbon basis, then the NRCS staff would um, be involved in certifying that the practice was implemented correctly, you know, through a normal contracting process. If it was something done for a, a carbon market, um, then they would have their own methods for doing that. Thank you. Thank you.